Hello everyone. This video is on Newton Alta Assignment Section 3.4 Part 2 called Evaluate Composite Functions. So in this video I'm going to be going over a preview version of this assignment. So please understand that the questions I see in this video may not be the same questions that you see when you do the assignment yourself. But all the objectives are the same, so the questions should be similar enough to where watching me do a few of them here hopefully helps you in some way when you're working on the assignment yourself. All right, so you got the title, you got your mastery bar, telling you how far along you've gotten. The objectives, looks like there are three objectives in this assignment. Under the current objective, there should be a question related to it. And at the bottom of every question, there is a feedback button where you can send feedback to Newton. You will not have this instructor cheat button. All right, this is for instructors only. But you will have a more instruction button, which you, know, you can click on if you're struggling with a particular topic and you'll be sent to a page with some reading to do or some videos to watch and you'll be given questions related to that instruction and you know you can get through the assignment that way hopefully all right so this first objective evaluate composite functions given a table of values So first I want to talk about composite functions again. Now you did see composite functions in section 3.4, part 1. Remember, uh, composite functions look like this. You're given two functions, say f and g, and then you create a new one called f compose with g of x, or g composed with f of x, or you could have f composed with f, or g composed with g, or f composed with f composed with g. You know, you can compose multiple functions, more than just two, but we're going to probably st be sticking to two at a time here. I got multiple different ways to write a composite function. Now, f composed with g of x, uh, a way to write this, another way to write it would be f of g of x. Now, if you had g composed with f, the way to write that would be g of f of x. So the order matters, right? The order in which the functions come matter. So say I was looking at Back, back to the beginning line here. Say I was looking at f composed with g. f composed with g of x. So first x goes into g. That gives me an output, g of x. Then that output, that g of x, according to this, goes into the next function, goes into f. Then g of x goes into f giving me f of g of x, right? giving me my final output. And if you were doing g composed with f, you know, x goes into f first, and then f of x goes into g. So it really matters what order it comes in. You're going from the inside out, right to left, however you want to say that. All right, so back here on the assignment problem, the first one we're seeing, you're asking, you know, saying, given the following table of values, right, this is a, evaluate composite functions given a table. Uh, you're going to go through the three objectives are given a table, given graphs, and just given the rules for the functions themselves. But you're doing the same thing every time. Given the following table of values, compute g composed with f at x equals 1, right, when the input is 1. So here's how that would work. Right? So for example, you know, if I said, you know, what's g composed with f at 1? So another way to write this would be g of f of 1. So first, 
you plug 1 into f. What's f of 1? All right, so back in that table, my inputs are these x values in the left column. All right, first you plug 1 into f. All right, the f column, the f outputs are in the second column, and the g outputs are in the third column. So what's f of 1? According to this table, it is 4. All right. So this is 4. And then I take 4 and you know, plug that into g. G of f of 1. You put 1 into f, gives me 4, and then I take the input of 4, plug that into g. Right, let's see what that gives us. So back on the table, you know, again, the inputs are all down this left column. I go to an input of 4, what's the output of g? What's g of 4? It's 6. Right? The third column gives me outputs of g. So back here, g of 4 is 6, so that's, and that's what they wanted. That's our final output. So for this composite function called g of f, when you plug in 1 and go through the process, you know, your final output is 6. Right? And if you were to graph the function called g of f, or g composed of f, the ordered pair 1, 6 would be on that graph. Right? But all they want is the output here. Right? So I just type in you know, the final output, 6. Then after you submit, you know, you'll be told if you're right or wrong, if you're wrong, you may be given another chance, but you know, usually there's going to be some answer explanation afterwards. Please read through these, especially if you're wrong. Try to figure out why you were wrong, right? and hopefully you can learn from your mistakes uh, for future problems. All right, next question. Now we're evaluating composite functions given the graph of these functions. Now they don't give you the graph of the composite function, they give you the graph of the individual functions, right? Here's the, the graph of f and the graph of g. Notice they don't give us the graph of f composed with g or g composed with f. All right, so once again, you know, we're given two functions, f and g, just their graphs. And we're asked to find what would be the output of the composite function, right? f composed with g, see f of g here? when the input is 1. Right, so once again, you know, we have f, what's f of g of 1? Or f composed with g at 1. Right, same thing. All right, so first, I go from the inside out here. I plug 1 into g. So what's the output for the function g when the input is 1. Now remember, input is on the x-axis, output's on the y-axis, the horizontal axis and the vertical axis, right? So what's g of 1? So I go to 1 on the x-axis, then I go to the, the g graph, the red graph, and I get an output of negative 3. Right? So g of 1 is negative 3. And then I plug that into f. So what's f of negative 3? So I go now to the x-axis, I go to negative 3, and then go to the f graph. See the output of that. So again, back here I go to negative 3 on the x-axis, and go to the f graph, which is the blue graph, and I get an output of negative 2. And that's the final step in this composition. Get an output of negative 2, and you know, that's what they want. So I plug 1 into g, get an output of negative 3, then take that output, plug it into f, make it the input for f, and get, you know, my final output. Right, negative 2. And that is all I'm asked to type, just that final output, negative 2. And submit. Great. <clears throat> and once again, please read through your answer explanations. So now we're back to the same one with the graphs. So this one I'll just kind of talk. All right, I'm not even going to write it. I think saying just one example is good enough on paper. We're asked to find f of g of 3. So how does this work, right? 3 goes into g first. What's g of 3? So I go 3 on the x-axis, input of 3, and then go to the g graph, which is an output of negative 1. All right. And then I plug negative 1 into f. 
what's f of negative 1? So I go to negative 1, go to the f graph, well that's right there, negative 1, 0. Right? So f of g of 3 after the entire composition process, the final output is 0. Next. All right, so now we're just going to be given the functions themselves, no graphs, no tables. You could make tables if you want. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so I'll write this one out here. We're asked, you know, we're given functions f and g, and we're asked to find what's f composed with g at an input of negative one. All right, what's the what's the what's the value of f of g of negative one? Okay, so let's do that here. There's a lot of room on this paper. So this time f of x is you know negative one times x squared plus six times x plus three. G of x is two x plus three. And we want f of g f composed of g at negative 1, or, you know, they wrote it the other way, which is equivalent, f of g of negative 1. All right, so the first thing that happens, kind of working inside out, right to left, negative 1 gets plugged into g first. All right. So off to the side here, what's g of negative 1? Well, according to the rule, it would be 2 times negative 1 plus 3, which is negative 2 plus 3, that's positive 1. And then that positive 1 goes into f. All right, and then what is f of 1? Well, going through the rule, replacing all the x's with 1, that'd be negative 1 times 1 squared, plus 6 times 1, plus 3. This is negative 1, plus 9, it's positive 8. And that's the final result. All right, so f of g at negative 1 is positive 8. And that's all they want. And they just want you to type that final output, just like all the other problems so far. Great. Okay. All right. Now that I've done, you know, one of each of these on paper, I'll probably just speak the rest of these out loud. If you want to do it on paper, fine. But I feel that seeing one of these on paper, each for each of these examples, each of these uh, objectives, is enough to to get what's going on here. So here another table of values, what's g composed with f at 1. So how does this work, right? 1 goes into f first. So I put 1 into f, I get 4 as that output. And then this number 4 is the input now. So I go here and plug it into g next. g of 4 is 12. Right? So g of f of 1 ends up being 12, according to those tables. All right, so back to explicit functions. Now these are pretty simple linear functions. So again, I'm just going to talk it out. What's f of g of 3? So 3 goes into g first. g of 3 would be 3 minus 3, or 0. And then I plug 0 into f. f of 0 would be negative 4 times 0 minus 6 would be negative 6. Easy, easy, in my opinion. All right, we're still given explicit functions here. No, they're not too terrible, I don't think. No, one of them is uh, f of x equals negative x minus 4, g of x equals negative x squared minus 3x minus 1. What's g of f of negative 1? All right, so here, negative 1 goes into f first. f of negative 1 would be the opposite of negative 1, which is positive 1, minus 4 is negative 3. Then I plug that negative 3 into g. g of negative 3, I right, replace these x's with negative 3, it's be negative 9 plus 9 is 0, minus 1 would be negative 1. So final output, negative 1. And if you don't want to do that mentally, you can write it out on paper. Absolutely nothing wrong with, the, with writing it out on paper.
Okay. Next, uh, we're given functions again. One's a square root, right? The square root of negative x plus one. The other one's just a linear function, negative x minus three. What's f of g of zero? So zero goes into g first. g of zero would just be negative three. All right, then I take that negative three and plug it into f. What's f of negative three? f of negative three would be the square root of the opposite of negative three plus one, which is three plus one, that's four. Square root of four is two. All right, so the final output is two, positive two. Great, all right, so that objective's done. And notice I'm doing the same thing every time, just with a table or a graph or some functions. Right? So there's another one with a table. What's f of g of 3? So I plug in 3 to g first. So input 3, the output of g. g of 3 is 4. So that becomes the new input. So I go to 4 on the first column and then plug it into f. f of 4 is 14. All right, so f of g of 3 ends up being 14. One more with the tables here. What's g of f of 4? So again, 4 goes into f first. So if I plug 4 into f, I get an output of 1. All right, now 1 becomes the new input, and that goes into g. g of 1 is 9. All right, so the final output, g of f of 4, ends up being 9. Great. All right, so that objective's done. Again, once you know what you're doing, these should all be very quick. Um, so here, given a graph of f in blue, a graph of g in red, or whatever colors you're seeing. And what's f of g of 3? So 3 goes into g. So I go to 3 on the x-axis, go to the g graph, the output's 5. So now I plug in 5 to f. So I go to 5 on the x-axis, and then go to the f graph, I get an output of negative 1. Right. So the final output here, f of g of 3, is negative 1. should have just one more of these. Right, and here's again graph of f, graph of g, separate. They want what would be the value of f of g, f composed with g at 2. So 2 goes into g first. So I go to 2 on the x-axis, then I go to the g graph, which I'm already on. So the output 0. g of 2 is 0. And then I take 0 and plug it into f. What's f of 0? So I go to 0 on the x-axis, go to the f graph, and the output is 5, right? So f of g of 2 is 5. Great. And that should be it. And notice I was doing the same thing every time, whether there was a table or two graphs or two functions. You know, you, you might want to write out the functions if you want. But, I mean, if you can do it mentally even better, right? Just just get through these pretty quickly. Right, and that should be it for the preview version of this assignment. Again, as I said at the top of the video, you know, please understand that the questions I saw here may not be the same questions that you saw, you see when you do the assignment yourself, but you know, the objectives are all the same. So I'm hoping the questions are similar enough, you know, that watching me do these here helps you in some way when you're working on the assignment yourself. And thank you very much for watching.